Thank you. Welcome. Nice to see so many people want to hear about uh, UX. Uh, we are uh, Emily Linkvist, and uh, my name is uh, Jens Christian Bang. We are working together in a company called Already On. We are um, kind of uh, a new kind of a company because we are uh, two people in, in Norway, and then we are 25 people in uh, Ukraine. And uh, the market is, of course, Norway. And we are both uh, working with um, usability, and uh, we have really a passion for usability. Uh, we read a lot about it, we test it a lot on our clients, uh, and we are also attending to, to uh, usability congresses where it's only usability people. Uh, the last one we went to was um, something called the Nielsen and Norman Group. Have anyone heard about it? I think that is one of the largest uh, analytic um, companies, American, which uh, only work with uh, uh, UX. Yes, he's Danish. And he also had um, a critics of uh, Windows 8 uh, in November, I think, where he, he said that uh, the new Metro user interface was uh, not so smart. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and uh, Norman, he had uh, written a book for 30 years ago that deals uh, something that uh, they read in school because what he wrote for 30 years ago is still important. Uh, Emily attended two to three days of uh, topics. Maybe you can say what they were. Yeah, there were uh, complex uh, applications, uh, two days of that, and then one with uh, about psychology and usability, which is the subject that I'm going to speak about. Hmm. Emily has also um, uh, own web called um, uxfreak.com mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, have recently wrote a book about how to evaluate user experience or usability of mm -hmm. complex applications. So uh, we are going to use some of the materials that we have from uh, uh, both the book and from uh, Emily's web and what we have learned in the other places. Is the book available also in English or is it English? No, it's in Norwegian. Uh, Maybe I will uh, translate it. <laughs> but our market is uh, the Norwegian market, so uh, if a lot of people are he very... Will, he will talk about the topics from the book today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In English. <laughs> So what we are going to talk about today is what is uh, UX and what is uh, usability. Yes, and then I'm going to talk a bit about the attention, how to capture. I don't know if I should talk in the microphone. How to capture <laughs> attention. <laughs> <laughs> and then about graphics, how shape colors and icons shape our decisions. And a bit about uh, appreciation triggers and then noise and how what's not there uh, can affect the experience and affordance and matching mental models and a bit about language. Yes, and then I will keep on with um, complex web application. What we mean with that, um, patterns, um, evaluation, and then the evaluation of UX and user testing, which is a part of that. First, I will ask, do you know, does anyone of you know the, the difference between uh, usability and user experience? Cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it cloudy? Nobody want to try? If you don't want to try, then I don't want to try. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that, that's uh, right, <laughs> because uh, 
I, I, when uh, the first time I heard UX used um, massive, it was uh, for one year ago because then we had um, Joomla 3.0 UX as a project name. Do you remember that? Um, and then after that, UX has been a, a very um, hype word. But uh, to explain the difference, uh, you can um, you can imagine cutting a tomato with a very sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Has any one of you done that? Yeah. One person. Really <laughs> 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 Three people have uh, cut a tomato mm -hmm. with a sharp knife. You know, you know the feeling when you cut the tomato with a very sharp knife. It's a very good feeling. Yeah. It feels really good. You can't stop cutting because it slice so good. That's the feeling. That's the user experience that you get. And the sharpness in the knife, that's the usability. Because that's a part of the tool that you use that makes it good to use. So the feeling that you, you use an object, that's the user experience. The feeling that you get. And this feeling can be good as cutting a tomato, or it can be bad if you are uh, using a web, um, bad website, or if you're using another kind of object that is not fit for human. So how does poor user experience feel like? I have a video here. It's telling a lot. Do you don't see it? Yeah, now you see it. Have you seen it before? the feeling <laughs> that's why it's so fun because we understand the anger he feel because he's using a, a application which is have a very poor usability it's very irritating frustrating and and then you get really mad and I, I think that everybody that has used a computer know this feeling Hmm? When you type 2,000 words and you say it, the session times up, you log out. So, usability, uh, according to uh, our Danish friend uh, Nielsen, uh, that is, uh, uh, you can put it into five different uh, topics. That is something called learnability. And of course, that is how how easy it is to, to use it, how um, intuitive, you see? If you start to use an uh, uh, application and you learn it and you can start using it in, in a few seconds, then the learnability is, uh, is good. But you also have something called efficiency, and that is how fast you can work with the application. If we are talking about, um, I'm coming back to complex application like an accounting system, if you have to do uh, uh, 20 clicks to, to, uh, to do an invoice, then it's not efficient. If you can do um, tasks with few clicks and uh, in a short time, then it's uh, efficient. And you see, it's a difference between learnability and efficiency. So sometimes uh, accounting system is not 
um, maybe so easy to, to use the first time, uh, but you can be very efficient when you're using it because you know how it works with shortcuts and stuff like that. And then you have memorability. That is how easy it is to remember because if you have used the system, you have learned how to use the system and then you will be away from the system for a couple of days, weeks, and then you come back to it. How easy it is to catch up and start using it efficient again. And then you have something called errors. That means how good is the system to handle uh, uh, mistakes made by the person that is using it. Because when you're using a system, as a human, you will, you will try something. You're not quite sure, but you think that the system should work like this. And when you do it, and the system just stop, or not telling you that um, you probably tried to, to do an invoicing, or you tried to uh, buy an object, uh, but it didn't work, because you should rather do like this. That's a good way to handle uh, errors from um, from the system. And then the last part is satisfaction. That goes to very much with the feeling. If you like the design, if you feel that the design looks good, then you also uh, looks good, uh, look <laughs> not looks good, but then you feel that um, this is a good application. So if it's a bad design, don't look so good, then you think it's harder to be forgiven uh, with, with the other uh, topis topics as well. So uh, personally, I think that the satisfaction part in the usability is very important because if it looks beautiful, then it's more, it's more um, satisfaction to, to use it, especially if you use application uh, several hours per day, you don't want to look into something ugly. You want to look into something beautiful. I have a few examples that I would like you to come with, give me some comments to, in according to the usability. The first one is something called all in. That's a Norwegian, um, the Norwegian tax. Uh, department where everybody in Norway have to log in. Five million people, maybe not all the children, but uh, four, <laughs> four, three and a half million people have to go into here and register how much you have earned the last year um, uh, electronically signed a lot of papers. So this is very much used. So what do you think about uh, usability here? <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I've used it. Well, you recognize easily links for sure, but you don't understand. Like of course, it's in Norwegian, so it's not no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, uh, here it's uh, written elements. Yes. Of what? Above uh, what? <laughs> and here title. Yeah. Of what? Of what? And some date, date and yeah, status I and uh, here action. What should I do? I thought it was my eyes. <laughs> so, so yeah, if we go to uh, to the part that was um, learnability, it's messy. We had the part with um, efficiency. We can't say because we haven't used it. Used it. It's a lot of links, so maybe we can get to the job that we are going to do fast. We don't know. Memory ability. Remember this sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, how it um, how it handle errors? We don't know. 
because we haven't used it. Um, satisfaction and the comments. Does it look beautiful? No. No? <laughs> it's not. But if you get money back from the taxes, then you are happy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care about the people. I have another one. This is um, the registry of all companies in Norway and all cars. It's called Brønnøysund. What do you think? Hmm? It's probably. Yeah. Left part, yeah. So the try it was nice, but that's it. I mean, you know, you can only date easily try what they try. Unless also there is a box that's grouping some information there, so it's just you can do maybe also uh, what it says sky blue. Uh, yeah. Something. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. With nice icons that uh, explains everything. <laughs> 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 of course, uh, we can say that uh, it should have been more fancy, flashy, more icons. Yeah. It could have been working with uh, only characters. So that is maybe not uh, the main issue. But as you said, you, you're having blue text on a blue background. Uh, this is not important too much because they are involved. But uh, for example, the, the, high, uh, the highlight, the, uh, sorry, the line height. Mm -hmm. of the tax for the body tax is too small i mean the body tax is really small and it's for everybody nobody will read it i mean for the fair people it's almost possible to read i think yeah. i don't know how it is live but i think it's not so good uh, i mean from the heading it should be i don't know h3 i don't know mm -hmm. and the body tax there is no space so you really i think i mean from the tax part it's, it's not so good Yeah, that's very really smart. If those three things are not the three messages you want to sell, the three obvious objects, then you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. In this case, it would probably be the logo in the top, the small picture at the side, because there's a little green on it and some white, yeah. so you notice it. And I think probably small icon on the book and building in, in the search box might be the first thing, but the rest is just plan. I think that uh, I believe that 80% of people coming in here are going to search for companies to find the organization or uh, VIP, uh, uh, VIT number uh, and that you do here and after a while you lo learn that you should go there but uh, the cursor don't start there don't even start there you have to click there uh. and I, I would uh, estimate it to be uh, 300,000 people coming into this site every day <laughs> so it's they don't respect their users at all. And uh, the tab on top, are we in one of these uh, tab? Because it doesn't really say <laughs> where we are. No. No, okay. So this is also an address that doesn't exist. We don't know, but uh, you're right, it should be marked. And they haven't changed it for uh, so it works. Several, <laughs> several years. <laughs> no, they don't care because they haven't delivered the service as uh, the law has said. You have to have a website where you can search for companies and for cars, and that's all. And then they don't care. They have enough money, but they don't. They don't care. They don't respect the usage at all. So, what we mean is that it's better to design products around people instead of teaching people how to use products, because. Everybody that has worked with application know that they have made manuals. And some manuals is really large. We are having clients that have, um, have uh, systems, not from us, of course, 
that they have to every every time they're going to do the monthly invoicing they have to open the <laughs> the manual and read what to do because they can't remember it and that that is not the right way to build application you should build application and use more time on building the application and usability than using uh, to, to build uh, manuals for the systems. How many of you are developers and designers <laughs> <laughs> and project manager or <laughs> very good and we see we, we see very often that we have a um, interest conflict between designer and developers do you know no. <laughs> no. <laughs> because very often um, uh, developers know how it works so they don't think it's hard and um, uh, and they think that the, the designer is making a hard time for them because the designer is trying to make it more user friendly and then <laughs> then we have a little conflict so why is usability important any suggestions improve user experience you know we say before that you probably must have a good user experience if you don't have a good usability so we feel better yeah mm? and people that feel good they come back to your site they, do, they spread they share the experience with other people so more they talk about it, other people will come so new clients new people Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other suggestions? So the people can do what they want to do on your site, mm -hmm. but don't have to change that. No? They, they convert better. Yes, it converts better if it's a website. Because if you get irritated at once you have loaded the, the site, mm -hmm. then you don't buy anything. Yes. How I feel about my experience, and then different. It's a product that is kind of discontent. Like I get on a plane to come here from America, mm -hmm. and it's an awful experience. Mm -hmm. but, but it works well. I get here. You know. Yeah, but the 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 flight is actually a very or airports is a is a terrible uh, user experience because you have to come there al almost two hours before the flight is going and then you have to go through security check-in why do I why can't I do everything at once why do I have to do all these stupid things is it to to fill these two hours with stupid things and where is the, the free uh, Wi-Fi shouldn't it be a free Wi-Fi no they want to uh, suck the blood out of us for some uh, <laughs> some internet connection so <laughs> traveling with the uh, airplanes is a terrible way to uh, user experience yes here's some of the um some of what you you uh, suggested yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry uh job sa satisfaction increase of trust increase usage and adoption as was mentioned employee time time saving decrease training and support call and IT savings so it's a lot of money into good usability but I, I thought about what has happened with usability the last six years have you have you experienced any difference? I think it improved a lot. A lot. Yeah. Any suggestions why? <laughs> Apple. iPhone. Apple in general. They increased the usability so badly that all the companies that wanted to catch up had to increase their usability as well. Mm. Yes. I believe that's so because for six years ago, iPhone came. And I think that they set a new standard for how usability was going to, to be. Mm -hmm. 
you said Apple in, in general, but everybody didn't have a Macintosh. But after a while, everybody had, uh, or a lot of people had an iPhone. And then they demanded that everything should be as easy as that. And then, then Android or Google came with uh, their the system, which was as good as iPhone, that you can discuss, of course. But then a lot of actors understood that um, they was uh, was going to to uh, to get better products, and then in for six years ago we also got um, Facebook. I also think that Facebook um, made more people using internet, and because of that, they also uh, was more people that was demanding better usability. And very simple. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Google Apps, I mean, they have a word processor. It's very simple to use. I mean, they, they get rid of a lot of complexity. So iPhone, Office 2007, they went from uh, the old um, pull-down uh, menus over to ribbons. Um, Facebook, Android, Google, Samsung, HTC, Apple, Microsoft. Uh, they have lo made a lot of uh, like uh, tablets, oh, yes. mm, phones. So, over to a bit about the, the human mind. As uh, as Kristen told, my name is Emily, and uh, some of you have met before. Uh, just to take it really short, I am uh, from the beginning. Um, I have a degree in design, but in industrial design, uh, where I worked a bit with ergonomics. And when I went from industrial design to graphic design. I took with me what I learned about ergonomics and put it on computer systems. So you can say that uh, knowing about usability and UX is ergonomics, but for um, applications. And um, when you talk about uh, UX and usability, I think it's really important to think about the human mind because it's actually that one image, when you look at one image, is 30 places in your brain that gets activated. So that's how many places we want to uh, activate people to think when we, they use our applications. So um, that's how we can use the human mind to be a tool for us. So, attention. Attention is a process of focusing on a certain aspect of the environment while ignoring the rest. Um, when you are in a website or in an application, you um, there's almost always a task you want to solve. You have a problem or you're searching for something or there's something you're interested about. I'm sure that uh, the people that are visiting your site have a task. Uh, I don't know what the task is. Maybe it's something they want to buy. Maybe they just want to read about you. Um, and it's really important to know your user's tasks when you design a website or to know what you want the user task to be, you can say. So, there are a lot of people that are very task focused and the ones that are very task focused, they only s look and see the information they are looking for. Here is a, just an example from a website where um, the task is to find the phone number. So I only see the phone number. If this site, for example, would know that that is like 90% of the user are actually looking for this, maybe they think about rephrasing it, making it maybe bigger and 
easier to find for the user. So therefore, it's really important to know the tasks that the users want to do on your site. So what's the factors for attention? Of course, it's the complexity of tasks. Um, and that meaning if the task is uh, very complicated or if it's very easy. It can be um, if it's reading an article, then of course it's the article that should have the focus, but maybe it's a more complex task like filling in a form that's three steps or as Jens Christian told before, like creating an invoice, picking the person to invoice and so on. And then it's ta task famili familiarity. And that's how many times you've done this task before. Is this something you do every day? Is this something you're doing for the first time? And then it can also be multiple tasks. And then it's important to know if it's the similarity of the task or if it's different kind of tasks. All these uh, are factors for attention. So, I'm sure that every one of you have heard about banner blindness. You have? <laughs> That's when the user um, are so used to seeing advertisement that they don't see it anymore. That they block that kind out. They don't need an ad block, they have it in their mind. Um, this is something um, that's really interesting because you can see it when you do like eye tra tracking tests. You can actually see the user just sweep swooping around the banners, not even looking at them. Here's an example of it. And um, so this is something that you should be aware of as a designer as well, because if you have a website that have banners and you want to advertise something yourself on your website. You should be careful over designing it because if you over design it and it looks like an ad, actually people won't see it. They won't click on it because they think it's just advertisement. So sometimes it can be good to just simplify it. But that depends on what kind of site it is. So, is there anyone that heard about the Stroop effect? One. <laughs> That's good. I, I'm going to do a small test with you. Okay. And this is about reading out loud. So, I'm going to show you some colors, some words in colors actually. And I want you to read the colors out loud. So, we start with... And the next one. <laughs> Red, blue, green, gray, yellow. You see <laughs> where I'm going? It's really. Did you experience that it was much, much harder? That you had to think much more? <laughs> so that's a good thing to, to think about. I didn't understand. Yeah, I thought we had to read. <laughs> the color, you should say the color. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. So this is, I'm going to talk about color blindness a bit later, but yeah, that's a good point. Yes. Stuff. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to come back w about colors a bit bit later. Um, yes. Multitasking. Um, attention for more than uh, one object, and this is something that we have today. At least. A lot of young people there are multitasking a lot. So when you have a website or something, you you don't 
you have a lot to fight for because it's not only the person looking at the computer, they have their phone, they have coffee, and they are doing all this stuff at the same time. So sometimes, therefore, you have to be really clear in your message on your website because you have all these other factors that can affect. And um, it's also when you are multitasking, it's also, um, it takes a while to refocus. When you do one task and go back and all of that, you have to refocus every single time. So, um, yeah, you should think about that to be really clear in your message because the person sitting there is maybe multitasking. So, uh, what to remember about attention? It's to find the tasks, to direct usage where you want, and to not over-design when you have a lot of objects. So, um, over to graphics, and that's how shapes, colors, and icons can shape our decisions. Um, in this... Um, I'm going to talk about how we can use these objects to group things, for example, or how to use them to get what we want out of the users. When you are thinking about grouping, the human mind works in the way that things that are similar, it groups. So if there are a lot of round forms, it groups that one. And it's the same with colors. So you can do it even with shapes or with colors, or the best thing I would say is to do it with both. Because there are some people that have difficulties seeing colors. Um, but there are also some tricks you can do with forms. For example, which of the orange circles is the biggest one? Exactly. It's called a ebbing haud illusion. And that we can also use to our advantage when we design things. Um, one more thing that we do, um, the human mind is actually one of our, what do you say? Uh, when you go back in history, this was a survival instinct. And that's, we fill the gaps. When we don't see the full object, we don't have to see the full object to understand what it is. So we actually, you see what it is, even if you don't see the full. So there you can see it's one of the survival instincts we have that we actually see works nowadays in, in graphic design as well. We don't have to show the whole part of it for people to understand, to put things together themselves. Um, another thing that's important, it's symmetry and balance. And um, because if you have order, it's easier to get an overview. And this can be, I'm a bit fanatic about this. I have the disease called pixel perfection. <laughs> yeah. Design the disease. That's my uh, developers don't like it because I just look at it and say, ah, that one is one pixel wrong. Uh -huh. No, it's not. Yes, it's. I can see it. No, and they put it and I put it in Photoshop and just show them. <laughs> and that goes with text and everything. It's for me. I can almost not read on a web page where some things are not aligned correctly. And it also has to do with when thing, things are in harmony and symmetry, uh, you, you also are a bit calmer. It's easier to follow things because they are as they are supposed to. Contrast. This is what Jens Christian had a problem with in his, his slide earlier. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> and that is how we use different colors against each other. And it's really important to use contrast in the correct way. And 
there are some ways of testing this if you can't see it with your mere eyes. You can just Google on color contrast check tools, color contrast check tools, and there are a lot of them out there. So you can actually s test color against each other to see if, uh, if they're okay to put on objects. Because you don't want, like in this example, the red on blue, the top one to the right, you don't want to have that. Oh. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. It can be the same color, but it's just the contrast between them. I mean, how dark one color, how much black it is in one color, and how much white there is in another color. That's, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then it's very important to use big contrast to have. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes it's even better to use white on black yeah. because if there is an app. And that's, uh, that's when you need to go and see who are your users, who are the ones using this website or application. Are there people that are outside a lot? And um, is it that maybe the mobile version that needs to have some different contrast than, than the full site? We talked about this before, color blindness. And I just wanted to show you how these colors can look for someone. And there are also actually a lot of people out there. It's seven to 10% of men have this red and green, have a hard time seeing different colors. And there are also a lot of tests. You can test your website online to see how it will look for someone that had have color blindness. And that's something I will, yeah, that's really good to use just to see because then you can use contrast in a different way because they probably see some contrast but not the colors that clear. And of course I have a, color trick I want to show you as well. And I think some of you have seen this before. Have you seen this? What's uh, A and B? Which, which one is darkest? They're actually the same color. So this is how we can use color to do different tricks. It's really amazing. Um, because this is something you can see, it's about what it's surrounded by. Because if you had just those two, you would see that they were the same color. But because of the surrounding, it looks like something different. And that's something that's important to think about on a website as well. Because if you have an object, it can look different depending on what's around it. I have one more example of that. What's the thing in the middle? So that's just typical example and I have one more. Which, yeah, and they are, they are the same. That's, so. With this, I just want to show you that what's around an object has so, so much to do also, not only what the, the object is. Um, for example, I saw an um, advertisement uh, on a web page, a news web page, and the article was about the bomb, and the advertising next to it say bomb. <laughs> crash and stuff because it was something new and that was what th they wanted to show but I don't want to see an advertisement for like a new phone when I'm reading about a bomb that says crash and boom because they haven't thought about 
where they put the ad. Or you can, for example, read about dieting and then there are advertisements for McDonald's. It's like, so it's really important to be aware of the surroundings when you design things. Yes, and then another thing that's important is association. And here we have two buttons, but there is actually one that looks like a real button, like the one we use in, in real life. Looks 3D and looks like I can press it. Of course, I can't press it on the computer. I can only click it. But now that we're working with more and more um, touch pads and stuff, I also think this is very important to show the function in the design. Uh, over to how the use of icons, isolation. When we want to show a phone, it's actually easier for the brain to see a phone, to what you say, associate with a phone when they see the icon compared to when they see the 3D object. That's because it's, it's easier, it's smaller form, and they, you don't have to process as much information when there is an icon as it is when it is a 3D object or a photo, photograph. There's also one thing that's very important when you use picture or when you use icon that that's com something called generic viewpoint i don't know if you've heard about it but it's how to display things from the natural perspective so when you show a house there is no one that knows that that is a house yeah maybe people that <laughs> are a lot doing a lot of climbing or things like that but it's important to know where the where the user is again to how you see an object. Yes. So over to something I think is kind of fun. Button or link? When should you, you use what? What's the difference between a button and a link? Do anyone know? You are um, exactly. It's, you're on the right sure. right track. <laughs> yeah, but but sometimes when you design a website or doing something, it's really hard. Should I use a button? Should I use a link? Hmm, what should I use? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But there is a unwritten rule about it, and that is the button should be action. Save, add, delete, and link should be a path to another place. But sometimes you can use, as you said, a button to to grab attention because yeah. Link to a form, button to send in a form. And actually, more and more have started using, mm, instead of using a button for cancel, they use a link. Have you seen it? Mm. And that's because it's not really an action to cancel something. Mm. Because you're not doing anything. That's why you click cancel, is because you don't want to do anything. So actually, you just want to go back, or you want to stop that. So, but that can be discussed. And sometimes it's, it's not easy, but Mm, if you think about it, is it something I do or is it something that you just should lead on? But then if you want people to be lead on, maybe it's better to use a button just to. Yes. So um, when we are on the topic of talking about fields and what should we use, should we use a button or 
if we are using field, what kind of field should we use? Should we use a drop, drop down? Should we, uh, what should we use? Then it's important to know what the data is, of course, first. Is it a date field? And what kind of data should be put here? And what I always try to think about is to offer an alternative so that the user can pick how they want to fill this field. And this is um, one of my favorites when you should put in a number is here you have so many alternatives. You can drag the numbers, drop, you can push plus or minus, or you can actually write in the field. So you have three different ways of filling in data. And because you have different users, especially if you have a form that, that you want people to fill, then it's really important to suggest different ways of doing things. Um, I'm going, no, we're going to keep on one hour more, but do you need a break or can we just... It's fine. You just tell me and we can have a five minutes a bit later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want a break? Okay. Yeah. 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 You can look at the video afterwards if you missed something. So, have you heard of persuasion triggers? Yeah. There are a lot of them. I'm just going to go through them a bit fast and I doing all in this presentation. I'm not going really deep in any area. I could have stand here for a whole day to talk about usability, <laughs> but we only have two hours. So, <coughs> returning of favors. What can be a returning of favor? How can you, because if you get a favor, if someone come with coffee for you, you probably want to return the favor and give coffee back to that person. How can you use that persuasion on your website? Do you have any ideas? Exactly. So that's like taking it and putting in the wrong. Yeah. I want a favor before I've given you something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If it was good, yeah. 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 It's uh, a yeah, and uh, we we do it with having this free ebook, but you just have to fill and you get the, the book, and then you know the customer they have got something from us, and then maybe they want to buy something from us in in the future because they want to return return the the favor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
absolutely. And I think maybe uh, the second time you, if someone have downloaded something for free, maybe you should, should get something else they can get for free. And then a bit later, maybe you can ask for something back. Yeah. Absolutely. I have another example. When we get into the guitar, yeah. mm. our friends are always too small for us to put candy mm. and we mm. have to get the, the big guitar the whole day. So we put little packets of candy yeah. between each and every one. Yeah. And everyone says, oh, she put a candy in there. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are thinking, oh, I got candy. Maybe I need to buy an apple. But I mean, it's smart. Yeah, it. Yeah, but but I mean, it's just a smart. I mean, it's it's really smart because it triggers something, and even if you're not aware of it, it's actually triggering that I got something from them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, one more. That's commitment. And an example of this is, for example, is if you, if you like something on Facebook, you actually, after you have liked it, it can be for whatever reason, maybe you want to be in a competition or get some, be able to download something, like you said with this uh, Twitter, but it's actually, once this, when it appears in your newsfeed, um, you have made a public commitment to that product or to that brand. So even though you may not think about it, you will be more inclined to support it in the future. So that's something to think about. And we have one more. And this uh, is um, social proof, and that's, um, of course, you see the example. Maybe, have you ever stand in, in a line where you don't, you don't know why you're standing there? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think the first example is something in the seventies. Uh, the, the social society system I think maybe it was in Norway actually and it was in Scandinavia. I'm not quite sure where where they were in a, in a in a city. There was five people standing there, people looking into a room and I don't know, after thirty minutes there was forty people <laughs> It's, it's the same if a lot of your friends are doing something or if you go into a web page that you see a lot of your friends have liked, you're like, oh, but you're really looking for the interesting part of this. You're going there with a, with a whole new perspective. Authority? This is, for example, there are a lot of uh, people using it because when um, when they have like an expert saying this thing is good or um, when there are some famous person in the Joomla world saying that one extension is great, then you believe it much more because it's a uh, authority that says it. Uh, and it's also, um, this is also has to do with default. There is, if you have a default on a field, people will tend to use the default because they think that 
the default is the normal or the authority says that you should. So <laughs> and um, this, it just works, actually. I mean, there are some sites you've probably seen that, that always have just one item left of everything. <laughs> so maybe there you just see that, yeah. Mm. But th this is something that's highly useful. And it works because in the human mind you just want it even more if, if you can't get it. Or if it's hard to get, then. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I think. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of times it's one or three seats left, but I never seen like. 24 seats left, or something like that. But also, a nerd would know what map is not useful for, one map, for example, also does really well when they say to you uh, that they're going to expand it in 24 hours when you be ready. Yeah. So this is where, when you order something that in 24 hours, that means one day it will be there. Yeah. But also, in, bo in involving people to buy it. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. But yeah, but it's it's related. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's uh, it's really interesting how you can how you can play with these triggers, triggers of of the mind. Uh, and there's one more that I really like. It's framing. Have you heard about it? It's, for example, if you go to a restaurant. And there is always one or two dishes that are very expensive. And that is just to make the other dishes look more, oh, that's not that much. So this I will, uh, will order. But actually, uh, a lot of the restaurant had just done that so that you should be more comfortable with buying the other dishes. And this you can see all over um, the internet as well. You have a lot of sites that have like bronze package, silver package, and gold. And then one of them are the recommended one and the one that they actually want you to pick. And maybe actually that choice is the only one that people are choosing because the other ones, you see that that costs almost as much and doesn't include as much. And, and actually it's just to make the people feel better. I have choose, but actually they haven't. They have just taken something that's obvious because of the framing, because of the things around it. Yeah, 
Absolutely, that's true. Uh, it's very interesting because I've seen a lot of sites that have these because when you also um, have starting to, to look for this kind of triggers, you see them everywhere. You see that, oh my God, this site, this is just the framing. They, they don't have the other package or no one is buying that because it's only this one that actually will give something to me. Hey, so that was that chapter. Over to something else. Noise. You know what I mean with noise? Noise in design? It's when, when there's so much things around the content that you actually can't see the content. And I see this a lot of on websites that are over designing. They are using the things that I talked about before, colors and boxes and icons to a degree where it just gets all noisy. You can't see anything. You don't know where to focus your, your eyes. And I want to tell people to try to delete the noise and that can be done by just viewing and seeing what is the importance of this site what is what do i want to say and for example if you have a lot of boxes i want to group two here and four here and but there are different and yeah i do like this because here you really see the difference but actually all you needed to do was this because you can use the white space in such a good way and we have all this all this space all this white space and it makes it so much easier to read and to find and the mind is so complex so they see the different anyway i, I still see that there are four that are bit group there and two here and i see that there are differences without you can actually you, of course, it's maybe good to use uh, colors as well. It depends on what you are, how much you want to difference the object. But I see too many people using too much framing, colors, lines. So I just want to encourage people to use more of the white space. Yeah, absolutely. But the trends is going more and more in this direction, which I really, really like. You can see it. I just got one example here uh, of Microsoft's site. It's huge different. You see that they have taken away all the noise mm. and just made the, made the content king in, in a way, I, I would say. And that was I talked about was to create forms with what's not there, to not think about also what's going to be there, but also thinking about what's not going to be there. Because you can do so much with the white space. I'm sure all of you said FedEx logo with the, with the arrow, really famous, but they are taking what's, what's not there and creating something with it. Uh, over to affordance and matching mental modules. Do you know what affordance is? Anyone heard about it? For example, this one, a handle. These affordings for this one is, uh, is holding. And for example, a link provi provides with the affordance that it's leading somewhere. And we have learned that a link is leading somewhere. So it's something we have learned. We have learned that you can hold on to a handle. And so it's the signal, the object 
lives. It's the, it's the object's affordance. You can say, I have one more example. So, affordance, anyone? <laughs> now it's clear, now you know what affordance is. True? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but this is also for, for, um, for object or for something, because you have something that's natural, you think, in, in uh, everything has an affordance to, to just think about what the affordance is of different objects. It's really important when you create an environment or when you put designs together. And it's also, of course, very related to the mental model, because you have, when you think about an object in your mind, you think about it in probably uh, in an image, but probably maybe not the image you think. Because, for example, when I think about a cloud, this is what I imagine, and it's not the cloud as it actually looks, because but this is my my mental picture of it, and that's also important to think about what's the mental picture of this thing, and maybe not. Sometimes, as I said before, icons is so much easier. I could say in two seconds, cloud, here. That's what I'm thinking about. But if I had used the picture, it would probably take some more seconds. Mm, and it's the same when you use different objects. For example, if you're going to use object for a bird, there are some birds that, <laughs> that you see as a bird quicker than others because it's matching your mental image of a bird. As I said before, I'm just touching everything. <laughs> this is subject really is small. If you want to talk more about anything about it, just come and talk during the conference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's uh, b that's important when you when you go from. Uh, that's actually I have a fun example of that because when I was at this conference in uh, America, um, I don't know if there are anyone. Yeah, Canada, we have one. <laughs> yeah, so um, there was an example of good usability, and there was a website. There were they were selling cheese, and I just for me a cheese is like you know real thing that you have your. And, um, and for them it's just, yeah, so it's important to know if you want thick or thin slices. No, it's just, I would never order thick or thin slices, I just want the cheese, but okay. And then it, they said it was great usability because it said that thick s slices were good for hamburgers and thin slices were good for sandwiches. And yeah, maybe that's good in America, but it wouldn't work in Europe. So that's, that's true, it's also with uh, mental pictures and things. So you should think about the audience always, the user. So um, language. Yes, I'm going to be a bit faster. Uh, language. How important is language in your uh, website or application? Have you thought about the language? How to name things? Uh, for example, uh, language on buttons. You really want the user to read all that text? Or if you want to do an action, you have clicked on the action, you just want to do the action. So one tip that I have for you, always write out the action. Because if you go to this window and just see export and you don't want to read the text because you already know that you are going to export something. Also the order of words matters because it can mean different things depending on the orders you put words in. Reading, this is also different, different parts of the world, but I'm referring to Norway. <laughs> um, and here again, I come to multitasking actually, when I come to uh, language, because what you name things are so important. For example, if you sell a web service or, or something like that, uh, websites or something, have you thought about what your first page say, the tab say? Because 
a lot of people, especially me, I have like 17 tabs I can have open at the same time. And then when I go back and just, what was this about? If I don't understand it, maybe I just cross, cross it away. And you can actually lose a customer if they don't understand what it was about. And you have like one word. Someone that's really good at it is the car business, like rent a car. Almost all of them have rent a car. But some of them have long names, so then you can't see the rent a car. So maybe you lost that one. And then when you Google the next time, you will come to another websites and have forgotten about it. So the importance is to name things correctly for what they are or what you want the user to do or what you want to sell. Uh, when you read from left to right, it's really difficult to read text that is like this. Even if it could look good in design points, it takes much longer. So. You should reduce the interaction cost in your text. You should use left aligned text. You should decrease the noise around the text, the white space. You should divide the text into a portion with smaller, informative, and precise headings. And don't be creative when it comes to naming things. I mean, you can be creative in the, in the typeface or in colors and stuff. But when it comes to naming, it's really important that the user understand what it is about. So I don't think it's the correct place to be creative. But you can say something <laughs> against me if you want to. And then also write out actions on buttons, because that helps the user a lot. Back. To Jens Christian. Thank you. Ah, then we are going over to a new topic, <coughs> because now we are going to talk about uh, complex applications and uh, the importance of something called patterns, user interface pat patterns, how to evaluate complex applications and user testing. So what is a complex complex application? A complex application is an application uh, uh, like an enterprise software, like an um, like accounting system where you are invoicing 10,000 subscriptions. That is a typical complex application. Or a CRM system with uh, uh, 5,000 clients. That's that's a that's a complex application. It's also uh, if you have a um, a web store with a lot of uh, products, that is also a complex uh, application. Or yeah, if you have a, a rich uh, functionality in a system, that is very complex, and that give special demands in the user usability for, for the user to, to find information and find functions in this um, application. An example is from uh, a member uh, management system that uh, we are building uh, in already on. Uh, here, it's, here it can be like 10,000 members and uh, in this system it's very it's very um, important to make it easy to find or to, to use filters to find groups of people because you want to, to find um, every, everybody that is uh, in that age or is from that part of the country or have special uh, um, attributes. So that is an example for a Another one is a uh, kayak, where you can order uh, 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 a travel. Here we also have, this is also a very, very complex application. And for making complex applications, because when you build a complex application, you are, are making a lot of pages, you are uh, doing a lot of user interfaces. 
Uh, we use something go called patterns. We use interface patterns. Have any one of you heard about that? Two people nodding. Three, four. And uh, a pattern is a library with uh, buttons, search fields, uh, different tools that you can use. Uh, a typical pattern will be built by some designers and it will be used by the developer. It, uh, it's quite similar to uh, Bootstrap because there you have uh, patterns or, uh, or tools that the developer can use. So you are bootstrapping or you are having a library with all, all, the, um, all the tools and how they are going to, to, to look like. And uh, this way to do the development is, uh, is making it easier to develop and you also will have the same, uh, use the same tools in the whole solution. We have uh, in this uh, system that we built by ourselves, that is a, a large system. We have seen that uh, we have used uh, two or three years for building it and we see that buttons that we made for three years ago looks different than, than the button we are making today. And that's because we don't have used uh, patterns all the way. So why is pattern goods for good for uh, developers? Of course, uh, we don't have to do the design every time. We do it one, one time and it will be, be used. Um, it's uh, much easier to start making the, the design because you can use um, a, a set of design that you uh, or pieces that you put together uh, from before um, and it makes uh, much uh, faster to prototype and you also have a common language where you can discuss because when designer and developers project manager clients are meeting and discussing how to solve different uh, problems in the application, you have a, a more accurate language to use. You can say, I want to use uh, this kind of um, pattern, or I want to use this kind of pattern. And then you can start discussing this in a very m in much more professional way um, early in the process. Um, why is patterns good for your users? Users like or feel safe with things that are familiar and uh, predictable. So if they have seen this, um, these tools from before, it's much easier for them to start using it. And that shortens uh, the learning curve, of course. So I'm going to show you some patterns now with the names um, and, then, and then you see some examples of what kind. The first uh, pattern uh, is uh, something called uh, Inspector. This is from um, Runkeeper. Uh, and you see, you see here that I've been cycling uh, and running and when I click on the next exercise I've done, this part is being updated. So the Inspector is the large window and the inspector could also be if you are um, if you have a, a file manager and you click on uh, each file and you're on the, in another window see the properties of the, uh, the file another uh, typical inspector is uh, hotmail where you see uh, all the mails and when you click on the mail you see the content of the mail We also have something called inline actions and that uh, is when you are listing a lot of records. Then you have a single button so that you can, you can do something with the listing. Um, this is from LinkedIn. And you also have, you also have in the, uh, 
in s some of this inline action, you can also have a pull down menu so that you can you can change, for example, the status of one uh, one record directly without opening the um, uh, the record. And when you do it this way, then you will you can work much more efficient. You don't have to do so ma many clicks. You can do it in one click. What you might have used three clicks on for doing something else. And then it expand. Uh, yeah, that's very smart. That's that's called a drawer <laughs> <laughs> because you have a um, triangle. Yeah, and then you click it, and it expands a little, and then you can do some typing. Yeah. Yes, we also have column uh, filtering, that is that you can sort it by clicking on the header. We know this from uh, a lot of applications. But this is uh, this is giving a very good feeling for the user and to talk about this when you are in the project, put it into the standard for how we are doing listings in our application, makes uh, application much more consistent looks the same every time. We also have filtering hierarchy where you can do filtering for each columns. You probably know this uh, where this is coming from. <laughs> and <laughs> if you have thousands of uh, articles then you would like to uh, to sort them down to to some topics active, maybe some date range, so that you can easily easily find what you are, are looking for. And we also have, here is uh, something called a drawer. Uh, this is from Dynamic CRM from Microsoft, where you can have a listing and then you can open it and see some of it. A quick view, view. and uh, you could also have that you could edit it, it without opening the, the new window or the, the card, you can do, do the, the editing right here. And that saves the user for several clicks. We also have something called uh, attribute-based search, where you can, you can search and then you can put in the filtering in the search at the same time. This is from iStock. And uh, this is this is where you can. Uh, this is only one filter, but you can also have that you have different filters. You also have something called attribute-based search with several attributes. And here you see, you can search for, just like in uh, eBay, you can search for for different uh, topics to reduce a list of 10,000 members down to only four. And that is also, also very efficient for the user. We also have um, the next level of this uh, attribute, uh, attribute result refinement, where you can do a search and after the search, you adjust the search um, even more with uh, the volume control, like here. And then you, yeah, you can click and uh, the search is changing all the time. This is from Kayak, where you search for flights. And uh, it's thousands and thousands of flights that you are going to search within. So this is a very important way for the user to, to use it. And we also have something called uh, completion suggest and drop box we also put in uh, where, uh, where the system suggests 
what you are searching for. So if you are searching for uh, us uh, user interface uh, patterns, or you are looking into uh, to bootstrap, you will find a lot of them. And then you can make your own uh, library of it, so that you can uh, use it in the development in one project or in one product or for one client so that they have it the same way all the time. Now I'm going to talk a little about how to evaluate a complex uh, web application uh, or application because every application should be web. That's why we are here. Uh, and uh, this is um, what I have written uh, the last ebook about because uh, I have put it into two, two ways to evaluate. The one, one of them is to evaluate or rate the usability uh, by some, um, some uh, uh, concrete elements. So you can test it out and see, is it like this? How many clicks, clicks this and this and this? And you can put it into an Excel sheet and say yes or no, or give them a rating. Uh, and the other way to, to evaluate it is by using user testing. So I'm going to use some examples for uh, rating usability. One of the questions you should ask uh, when you are evaluating an uh, application is does the application work for a, a mobile device, a cell phone or a tablet? And then you will evaluate does it work as it is or is it using responsive web design or um, is it our own web no, uh, mobile version for the, for the system or is it an app? with the system so that you can use it with the app or haven't the uh, supplier thought about uh, mobile uh, mobile devices at all. Very often you find out that old application is not used with uh, it's not meant for uh, this kind of uh, devices. Another um, topic is uh, overview and search for large uh, volume data uh, that is filtering as we have already mentioned in um, the patterns and attribute result refinement as also was mentioned. So here you see what we showed you earlier where we can reduce the search. We also have something called uh, ongoing valuation in forms when you fill out a form, um, you should have uh, a validation that tells if the, the data we have filled out follow the rules that the database asked for. And here you see uh, that you get a green line around it if it's uh, correct. And when I try to put in letters into a phone number, I get a, a red sign and I get told that this is not um, the right kind of uh, data because everybody has probably tried to fill out a, a form and then, and then you click submit and then you get <laughs> the form get emptied and you have to do everything from the start or you have to go up and look for where you misplaced some information. This should be ongoing or, uh, all the time so that you don't have to go back. We also have use of menus uh, does anyone know this uh, kind of menu? The old traditional window menu? And we are not used to this anymore because we are using modern uh, menus and we would rather like menus like uh, ribbons where we, we have a logic we see all the uh, all the um, actions we actually can do uh, by going into a, a tab, and we also having um, menus where 
where uh, you hide the information or actions that you actually cannot do unless you have done another action. This is from Gmail, you probably see that, and it's not much I can do here. I can fresh and I can ask for more, but as soon as I mark one, I will get a set of new um, actions that I can do. So you see the menu change due to what I've done and what I'm able to do without with a in, in this situation. Another way to um, evaluate an uh, uh, application is to make um, scenarios and, st and start counting how many clicks it takes to do action. How many clicks does it take to do an invoicing? How many clicks does it do to find a product in an in a, uh, e-commerce uh, system? And you can also um, have uh, taking the time, how measure the time how long does it take to do the invoicing? And if you are measuring several applications to each other, then you can put it into a form and see what is slow, how many clicks. And then you have some guidelines in addition to what uh, Emily just uh, added, uh, where you should have home in the upper uh, left corner, should have uh, search in the top, uh, settings is used with, uh, with uh, this symbol. And you also have how, how should the system uh, react when you're saving something. You see it's a quite different way uh, saving is working. In, um, if you're changing a contact in uh, Google or Gmail, then it gets automatically saved, and you get a, a message notice that uh, it's saved. But uh, if you don't, if you want to remake it, then you can click here. In other applications, when you are doing some changes, you get a symbol that you have unsaved data. So you can solve it in uh, different ways, and what way would be what suitable for the application? Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. You see the home uh, button here. Google have <laughs> have made it as a drop-down menu instead of only home. So if you click there, then you can go to different homes. But maybe only Google can do these changes because they are so dominating. And then let's go over to user testing. User testing in user experience is very important, probably the most important way to find out how good your application is. Because we can do all this testing, technical testing as uh, we went uh, through, like counting clicks and uh, see if we are following guidelines and all that stuff. But that doesn't help if the users don't understand uh, how it's going to be be used. And here I have an uh, example for how um, a testing. Hmm. Is internet locked? Yes. So I can't see the. Yeah, to reconnect to the Wi Fi, then it will work, but at the moment. Uh can I do it? Or will it take time or what? You have only to rec reconnect to the Wi Fi. Okay. That's the, the setting here. Which so one? It's locked. You click on it now. And you look right. But I can't. Do you know why it's like this? Yeah, it's the problem with the Wi Fi in the area. Try to come into the 
Yes. I'm not sure if I'm having internet. Yes, I uh am. Super fast internet. Okay, I think I have to give up. Anyway, it's a, it's a guy that uh, is going to try out uh, um, uh, e-commerce solution, and you see his face and his and his screen at the same time, and you see all this uh, confusion because he tried to click on a link that is not working, and he get really angry. And I understand it. In the in the beginning, you think he's probably just stupid that don't know how <laughs> the system works. But after a while, you think that no, he's not the stupid one. The developers are the stupid stupid one because they made a solution that don't work. So I can try when uh, when I. But uh. It's hard <laughs> to uh, hard to explain his face. You should see it. Anyway, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, how many testers should we have when you are doing user testing? Because user testing is that uh, expensive. What do you think? It depends. Five test objects will reveal 85% of the problems in the user uh, interface. And that's actually very few testers that you have to use to find that uh, large amount of, uh, of uh, problems. And uh, the, the, the rule, if you can say it, I have a rule, 20 testers should cover everything. And then the question is, when should you do the testing? Do anyone have the, any suggestion? No, when? When? Yeah. Hmm? Start, yeah, incrementally. Start at one point, make some changes, do some more testing, do some more. Yes, because you can't start early enough. No. You should start doing the user testing on the wireframe. Because when you have a wireframe, you can show it uh, to some of the users and say, what would you click on if you were going to, uh, to buy an item or find a member or whatever? In, in Denmark, when we produce the test, when we came, when we came hmm? more, more here to speak to it, it's a, it's a good concept. In, in the basic thing, you submit your site and you make it a task, and then the people, users, log in and test it, and they will report. 
to sign up on our website like that to become users. They want to be users. They are small justice of websites. So part of the way they were supposed to be looking at websites is no longer how they are supposed to look at websites. Mm -hmm. So part of part of that process, and that's also why I said how before it was the process of how do you exist and how do you engage the users in searching. Because if they if they know they are judges, then they are probably no longer users but something else. Mm -hmm. Expert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Anyway, as early as possible, and then we come to user testing. Who and what? Who should be sh who should be uh, doing the testing? And what we can say is that them who should not be the testers is the project team. But that is what we usually uh, do. We have a client, and we are making a specification with the client, and they are telling we want it to work like this and this and this, and we discuss it in the team. We are a designer, developer, project manager, and who is going to do the testing? The same people. And of course we know how it works, because we have written a specification. We, ha <laughs> we have done the design. We know how it works. So the, the people that is not going to do do it, that is uh, the project team. And uh, we should also make scenarios. And the scenarios should be tested out on people that is actually going to do the work. When we are talking about the complex applications, it's uh, very often internal people in, in a company, people working in accounting or uh, membership management or uh, something else that they are uh, experts in, in what they are doing. And then we should make uh, scenarios and then ask them to try to, to uh, do the testing on the wireframe, on the Photoshop version, on the mock-up, and on the early stage on uh, the solution. And we, what we also see is that even though they are doing uh, testing on something that is uh, in beta or in, in test phase, then, then they can, their, their feedback is not expensive things to do. It's more like uh, we should have the search field here because it's next to uh, the action button or they come, come with smart things that is easy to adjust. And small easy adjustments will improve the system in a very, um, very much. Oh. Here's the tester. Hmm, yeah, but it will come back. Here's the fantastic tester. Oh. <laughs> Is it loading? Yes, it's loading. <laughs> five minutes with loading yeah, but uh, this is the last thing I'm going to clicking on sign me up oh that's not the actual sign me up button it's just a picture of it apparently it's kind of deceptive yeah I, I guess you understood He's not coming any, uh, any further. He's just trying to click on the car. He's clicking on sign me up button because it's an advertisement for sign me up, but it doesn't work. So with five test objects, uh, Amazon <laughs> would probably reveal 85% of... Uh, Loading, loading, loading. It's not important. It's just fun. Yes, so then we are back to, uh, to the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what we have uh, went through today hours UX 
attention, graphics, persuasion, noise, affordance, language, complex web application, patterns, evaluating UX and user testing. Do you have any questions? Or are you tired? Yes? Yeah, Microsoft is doing it all the time. Was this feedback useful? And every time you see that, you are so angry that you don't want to, <laughs> to give them f some f uh, feedback. But it's probably smart to try to get <coughs> feedback from, from the users. Like, yeah, the eye tracking uh, tools for the mouse. I just talked uh, a bit about it, I just mentioned it, but I just said there are a lot of tools out there to give you both tracking, eye tracking. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're right, and it's a very good question. And I know that people are having PhD in testing, so it's a very large topic, topic and they could probably talk about this for um, a week. Uh, so uh, so doing, uh, using a lot of those tools is probably uh, very useful. Uh, we haven't gone any further than uh, using testing with uh, people more like uh, filming the, the screen. Uh, we aren't even uh, filming their face, but we are sitting there and doing the interview or helping them to talk all the time. Like, what do you feel now? <laughs> uh, what are you looking for? Trying to get the test object to, to talk without thinking or uh, you know, just talking all the time so that you hear the frustration because it's actually frustration and problems you are looking for, not the not uh, getting uh, the positive feedback because you have made uh, a fantastic solution. Yes, any more questions? We are in time. One minute. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> but I hope you have had some, uh, uh, have enjoyed it, and uh, well, thank you for uh, the interest. <laughs>